Glory to Jesus Christ. We've been talking through this whole fast about sickness. How we, have, we are sick as human beings. We have the way that God created us. We are fallen from that in a fallen state. And we have sicknesses that we are dealing with and we are in need of healing. For example, I talked a few weeks ago about anger and how we are meant to be angry with our sins so that we repent. But instead we get angry towards others. That's not what we're supposed to do. But this is in our sickness, we do this sometimes. And today we read about the blind man as we're moving towards the Holy Week, a week away. We have a vision problem. We have a vision problem that we need healing from. This is the distortion or the problem of our vision that we have. We're able to see other people's faults very clearly, immediately, easily. Without even trying, we can see other people's faults whoever that may be. But we fail to see our own faults. It's hard for us to see. You know, when a person learns driving, and they drive, they tell you, check your blind spots. Every time you drive somewhere, check your blind spots. When you're changing lanes or parking or whatever it is, check your blind spot. Because there are things that we can see in front of us, but there are things that we have to turn and make a conscious effort to look. And if we don't, we can get into an accident. Because we cannot see it. We cannot see it. And our faults oftentimes are in our blind spots. We can't see them very clearly. But we can see other people's faults very easily. And this is actually a sickness that we have. That we can see other people's faults and, dis, uh, and, and wrongdoing so easily, so quickly, but for our own self, it's so hard. Our family sometimes helps us. Can, uh, God, I, I really believe this. God gives us family so that we can get help to see, to see our blind spots. I was talking with, my, with Kwachima a few months back, and I was, uh, you know, I was just asking, I was like, do you think I'm addicted to anything? That's what I asked her. Do you think I'm addicted to it? Because I can't think. I can't see it. Do you think I'm addicted? And she takes a moment, and I'm trying to think through it. Because I think I'm trying to be disciplined about things. And she takes a moment, pauses. And then my daughter just walks by and goes, phone, chips, sweets. And keeps walking. She didn't even, she wasn't even part of the conversation. But she just immediately, three things, three words. I was like, thank you. I didn't know I was talking to you, but thank you. But she sees it in a second, right? She saw it, and she could say it very quickly, what my, where I need to work on things, right? It wasn't even hard for her. But for me, I was struggling to see it, right? And that's, but sometimes when we don't understand this vision problem, we get mad, and we get defensive, and we, we argue, and we get into fights about these things when people are just trying to, trying to tell us Especially people who love us are trying to tell us where we could improve, where we can't see, trying to help us to see properly. Jesus was critical of the Pharisees because of the same thing. The Pharisees had this vision problem. They were doing a lot of good things, but they were seeing everybody else's faults. Even this man was born blind and Jesus healed him. And what are they concerned with in, the, in this passage? Oh, he did it on the Sabbath. They don't point to any of the good that happened, but they just say, oh, he did it on the Sabbath. And the proper vision we are to have, see, the sickness that we have is that we see other people's faults very clearly, and our own faults, we're blind. And the proper vision we're supposed to have, that God wants us to have if we go to him as the healer is, we can see our own faults very clearly, and we're blind to other people's faults. That is the healthy vision that we are trying to have, that we need to have. I'm reminded of a monk from the fourth century. His name is Moses the Strong, or Moses the Ethiopian. He was a big man, strong man, tall and, and big. Um, and he was into a lot of bad things. Because he was so strong and big, he, it was easy for him to take stuff from people. He was a... He was a in, in, in gangs, and, and he would go in, in a group of robbers, and they would go and rob people. 
Because he was big and strong. He could do it. He was intimidating. And that was just the easy way to go about in life. That he would go and steal and take from anybody he wanted. He was a bully in a sense. right? But it, it, to, do, to get whatever he wanted. And this is how he was living his life. And then he was running away because he had done some bad things and people were chasing him. And he was in hiding. And then he goes to a monastery to hide. Thinking maybe they'll let me stay here for a moment. And those monks, when he sees their way of life, he's so moved by it. Their devotion, their prayer, and, and, and their love of God, and their love of him too. Because even though he had all this history and all these things, they loved him. They cared for him. And so he was... He joined the monastery and he became a very prayerful man. He repented of his sins and he became a leader in the monastery over time. A very holy man. And it was ha it's just so happened that there was a situation where there was a monk who had done something bad. Another monk had done something bad in the community. And so a couple of the senior monks go to Abba Moses and they tell him, let us go. We need to have a council to, to discuss how we're going to uh, punish or, or what, what his punishment should be for his wrongdoing, this monk that made a mistake. And Abba Moses says, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. And then they keep on asking him, no, we need you to go. You're the leader of the monastery. We need you to come and uh, make the decision uh, and help us in making the decision how to reprimand or punish this monk who made a mistake. So he says, okay, I'll go. So he comes and he takes a, a bag, a sand. He takes a bag of sand and he cuts a hole in it and carries it over his back. And he's walking and walking and walking all the way. And then finally, somebody, as he gets closer to the meeting place, somebody comes to him and says, Abba, your, your bag has a hole in it. What's going on? You, you, you have all this sand. He goes, oh, because I just want to let everybody know I'm going to go place judgment on somebody, but my sins are behind me and I can't see them. And I'm not paying attention. And he's saying, my sins are behind me. All that sand is, that's trailing behind as he's going to make judgment is his sins. And when the other monks all see that, they say, okay, they disband. They don't, they have mercy. They have understanding. And they move away and they don't place any judgment. And it's a reminder for us that we all have that bag of sand, of sin, that, we're, that we may be holding on to, that we need to be careful of and watching at all times. You know, it's interesting, King David says, we say this in Psalm 51 all the time. Right in front of me. It's in front of me, not behind me. My sins are ever before me. That means it should be in front of me if I want to have forgiveness. But if they're behind me, I'm not repenting. Keep them in front. And our fam even if we don't want to, our loved ones, the ones closest to us, they are there to help us to see it. They're there to help us. God has put them in our life to help us to see our blind spots that we have. So that we can keep our sins in front of us. And when we do that automatically, we will have blindness towards other people's situations. We won't be so judgmental. I'm seeing this over and over. When we experience a difficult time, then we have, and we understand the faults and the difficulties, we have so much more compassion towards other people going through the same thing. We have so much more understanding. And in, and in turn, we have so much more love we're so much more loving then. Because we know how difficult these things are in life. And we become a more loving and compassionate community. And that's what God wants us to be. So let's be reminded of Abba Moses. Let's have the proper vision to see our own sins and be blind to the faults of others. May all glory be to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and always, forever and ever. Amen.